over the weekend in that split with Cal Baptist. They played a doubleheader on Saturday and had their game on Sunday weathered out. But they come in with a one and one mark. They have faced Tennessee. They have faced Texas in Austin. And they have played Arkansas twice. So the Sooners will be the fifth top 25 game that the Mavs have played this year. Here we go on a beautiful Wednesday. That one is fair inside the bag and Burrito is unable to get that play made at first base. Now we'll probably get a look at it again and maybe a review as Camille Corona beats the throw. Out or not, that was a great stretch made by Sid Sanders. You can see Burrito not able to get as much oomph behind it. If anything, maybe her foot came off the back, but great stretch, great pick by Sanders over at first. It looked like the throw beater, so it must have been the, the back foot back there. So Lindsey Franklin, the first baseman, stands in. She homered in the second game of the day against Cal Baptist the other day, leading hitter on this team. Player that Kara Dell said didn't play much with the prior staff, but we loved her competitiveness. And a foul ball that slices into the seats. I think we're going to be sold out again tonight at Love's Field. Over 4,200. You see any empty seats? Nope. There's none up here in this box, I <laughs> promise you. Gotta love it. Spring break. Everyone out? Yeah. Enjoying the weather? Hey, gotta take advantage of it. Yes. You're saying the weather? I mean, it's just perfect. A little hazy cloud cover tonight. Back up the middle into center field by Franklin. And the first two have reached here for the Mavericks in the first inning. Corona and infield hit. And that was hit hard by Lindsey Franklin. Yeah, that one smoked up the middle. You can see this pitch from Keeney. It's just a screwball that did not get to the inside half of the plate. It's left over the middle. And whenever you have that top half of the lineup for the Mavs, they're going to be able to execute. They're going to be able to convert those pitches into hits. So a little conversation. Riley Ludlam doing the catching for the Sooners. What's this conversation? What's it like, DJ? You know, as a catcher, and especially I love seeing Ludlam in this situation, a pair of leadoff hits here for the Mavs to start the game. Ludlam recognizes it immediately and simply going out there saying, hey, relax, hit some spots. Spot up, especially getting ready to go through the 3-4-5 and the WAC Player of the Week, Marley Nices. That's right. Nice is a huge weekend. And she showed bunt and took a strike. Nysus was 7 for 10 with a pair of home runs against Cal Baptist. And one was a pull home run, one was to the opposite field. Only 5-3, but she's got some serious pop. You know, and if you look at Nysus's Nysus's stat line, she's only got three bombs on the year. So you can just see as that hit 700 last week to get that average up over 300. So you can just see that she's settling in and starting to see the ball well. This one is Bunnett. Keeney out of the circle, throws it past Sanders into right. A run will score. Boone's throw comes into third, and it's 1-0 UT Arlington. So it'll be a sacrifice and then a throwing error in all likelihood against Keeney to play the first run of the night. Mavs coming to play, making the defense work, making Keeney. Look how far she has to come out of that circle. And with the speed of Nysis, she's putting the pressure on Keeney not only to range over and field that ball, but make a good play quickly. So UTA on the board first and still nobody out. That is hit right into the glove of Sanders and she will double off Nysus at first place. A much needed double play induced by Keeney. And that is the response that you want from Keeney. Again, making a pitch, letting your defense work. We heard Coach Gasso talk about it a lot this week. Of Your job as a pitcher is not to shut everyone out. Your job is to get outs and put your team in a position to win a ball game. And those are the types of pitches that get it done. So Nysus gets doubled off at first, leaving Franklin out at second base with two down for Jay Marino. This is 
Right-handed hitter out of Corpus Christi, Texas. Very, very young team for UT Arlington. The staff of Kara Dill taking over and reshaping things the way that they want them in Arlington. In the hole, kind of short hop there, but nicely played by Tiare Jennings. The inning is over, but the Mavs get a couple of hits and push a run across. And the Sooners have to respond as they come to the 56 home runs. They're batting 394 as a team, 415 in Big 12 conference play. Jada Coleman was four for seven with seven runs scored against Texas Tech over the weekend. She said, this team, when we draw walks and allow our teammates to do damage behind us and play free, we are at our best. And you can see it, right? I think I think one thing that we saw early, and I'm going to even go back a few weeks to the opening weekend here at Love's Field, you could see this offense pressing at times and not taking enough pitches, swinging at pitches outside of their zone. So it's good to see... These players recognize that, and, you know, obviously we know Jada Coleman is so composed in what she does in the box, but recognizing that and knowing what you need to do to adjust to be better and get more run production. A pitch in there, one and two to Jada Coleman, a three-time Sooner All-American. Two balls and two strikes. Jade Moreno, three and three record, 13th appearance and seven starts for the freshman from Corpus Christi, Texas. See a lot of her pitches go arm side with a few bumping in on that inside half. That one lined past Patty Gasso in the third base coach's box. <laughs> Moreno strategy get Oklahoma to feel like they have to protect that pitch that one that Jada Coleman just fouled off and then just slip one on the inside half and try and freeze them. Reno has this one deflected off of Corona a hard hit one hopper by Jada Coleman lead off single for the Sooners as they have the tying run aboard. And there's that same pitch, Nicole, that you just spoke about. Off the hip on the outside, the screwball, and Jada Coleman just doing what she does and slaring it right at third baseman Corona. I mean, Jada Coleman smoked that ball. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> she knew what was coming. She was able to make the adjustment, and she was timely in that at bat to make the adjustment. Here's Ella Parker. Moreno misses in with that one. Ella Parker leads the Sooners with a 438 batting average. Had a three hit, three RBI day Saturday out in Lubbock against Texas Tech. Just a little bit outside. Now, dangerous pitch on 2 0. And this is. Watching Moreno again the freshman she's seen a lot of time for UTA so far this season But she's going to have to keep these sooner hitters honest on both sides of the plate She cannot hang out on that outside corner all day So that one comes back on the inner half That's a gutsy pitch. I like it. I like it, but she heard you <laughs> there we go I was loud enough, but again that is a gutsy 2-0 pitch coming from Moreno to Parker the lefty In and then back out. And you can tell Ella Parker saying, okay. Early on in the game, the strike zone still being established. Each umpire kind of has their own odds and ends. So 
being able to adjust to find that strike zone as a hitter, find that strike zone as a pitcher. I mean, if the umpire's giving it to you as a pitcher, stay there. I wouldn't want to have to go on the plate if the umpire's giving it, it to me on the river. I'm going to stay there. I'm going to live there. Chad Spittler is our plate umpire tonight. That one hit to short. Cabasso's able to get the flip play there to second base and cut down Jada Coleman. Ella Parker's safe at first. And the Big 12 Player of the Week, Tiare Jennings, coming to the plate. She is tied for the program record in doubles. She is tied with Sid Romero with 58 of them. And she is one shy of the Oklahoma total base's second place spot. She would tie Lauren Chamberlain. And this is going to be an every game thing for Tiara Jennings. Some <laughs> sort of a record, some sort of a milestone. Just get used to it. Somebody needs to create a Twitter account. Just like <laughs> Tiara Jennings record breaking account. I don't know. Something like that. On the move towards second is Ella Parker, and the throw by Donahue will not get her. So Ella Parker, after reaching on the fielder's choice play, swipes second base. I love this call. I love the aggressiveness to get in scoring position for Tiare Jennings, who's seeing, seeing the ball so well. But what a great jump by Parker, and not even close. She's 9 of 10 in the stolen base department this year. Popped up on the infield. Looks like it's going to stay in fair territory. And Lindsey Franklin, the first baseman, backs up and puts it away. Two gone. It's a big out. You talked about being consistent on one side of the plate and how if you stay in one spot too long, Oklahoma, they're going to be able to adjust to that. You saw that pitch outside, but a little bit more elevated than what Jennings had seen all at bat. That was a nice job by Moreno. Cassidy Pickering is in for the Sooners. Hit a big three-run home run in Oklahoma's Saturday win at Texas Tech. 418 hitter with 21 runs batted in. I mean, you jump right in as a true freshman. That's not easy, Nicole. You, you certainly did it at a very high level in your debut, but it's not easy to break into this lineup. <laughs> it is not easy to break into this lineup, especially this team with so many veterans. You have a hitter like Pickering and Ella Parker over standing on second. The biggest thing that you think of whenever you think of freshmen coming in and playing college ball for the first time is their mental presence and their ability to feel out the strike zone and both of them have a great handle on that. I feel like something that has impressed me with Pickering and Parker included, but it doesn't matter how high of a level you play at in travel ball, the game here is so much faster. And they have just adjusted so well to the pace of play. A full count with two down. Pickering lifts this one into shallow left field. And that will be caught out there. Inning is over. Sooners leave one out there. And the Mavericks take a 1-0 lead to inning number two in Norman. To stay in the moment, not let pressure get too big for you is going to be key. Backhanded here by Torres. She's able to retire Nikki Donahue to start the second inning. Especially for Keeney in the circle. This is her... First start since they played Seattle way back in preseason. She hasn't been in this role in a minute. She's come in in relief. We've seen her multiple times, and she's looked great. But the starting role as a pitcher, you have to be in a different mindset. So being able to be present for the pitch and not let the start, the situation get too big, as she starts to settle in, that's going to be big. Zaya Castrita is in. Yeah, this is only the third start of the season for Carla Keeney now. Super familiar with it from her days at Liberty. Went to the NCAA tournament. They beat UCLA 
in the NCAA tournament last season, DJ. But when you haven't been out there in a while in this role, it's an adjustment. And I think Patty Gasso likes to see how you do when you're a little bit uncomfortable, doesn't she? Absolutely. And, you know, Nicole touched on it a little bit. We've seen Keeney out of the pin a ton. And it's a little bit of a different mindset that you have. But coming in and getting the midweek start. Fly ball toward left. Pickering chases over into the gap to put away out number two. But getting that midweek start, these are the types of games and the types of outings that get you prepped for Baylor rolling into town in a few days. Ah, that's going to be a fun series. They will play Friday night at Hall of Fame Stadium what in is Oklahoma the projected City. crowd for that? Well, so Coach Gasso was talking this week. There's the possibility of a sellout. And, of course, Oklahoma and Texas set that record with over 8,900 a season ago. Just incredible. But it's approaching sellout potential up there. And Patty Gasso was talking about that as well this week. Just to, she said, I don't get like awestruck very often, but that game <laughs> last year, because she was recalling her days as a junior college coach sitting in that stadium. And then there she was as a head coach with 8,900 people. And she said with JT being on staff there, it, it kind of took her aback to see what she was witnessing that night in Oklahoma City. Yeah, it's been Pretty cool, the moments that she's been able to experience. Oh, and getting away from Ludlam, we've seen her try to hit that outside corner to these hitters and still trying to find that right release point, still trying to find that, that right sweet spot in between. Okay, the pitcher, this is the pitcher's pitch and the hitter, I don't wanna swing at this. She's trying to find that sweet spot. Cavazzo hits this one, speared by Brito on a short hop, and the inning is over. So Keeney works a one, two, three, second. It is one nothing. UTA on top. Sooner softball is presented by OU Health on Sooner Vision from ESPN. Look at the drone video of beautiful Lumps Field. Got a little cloud cover rolling in. There's not a threat of rain tonight, but it makes things a, a little bit chillier. Wind blowing out of the south toward right as it typically has been. And Alyssa Brito leads things off for the Sooners here in the second. Brito hit two home runs on Sunday at Texas Tech. 32 runs scored for her. Rips this one foul. You can't tell me otherwise. I am convinced there's some kind of magnet on that third baseline. Yeah. <laughs> there is some Starting kind of magnet. I, I feel like every single time I see a game, both sides, there's always just something that's just ripped down the third baseline. So many plays right over the chalk line, a little controversial <laughs> that we've seen. Strike over the outer half from Moreno. Guido rolls this one back toward the shortstop, and it's off the glove of Cavazos. Guido will be safe at first. I will say this. Moreno is making some pitches, plain and simple. This is a good location for Moreno getting Brito to hook and pull and just seeing the defensive error, but kind of going back to that key, you've got to take advantage of opportunities. Getting Brito to chase a pitch outside the zone to lead off an inning is an opportunity you've got to take advantage of defensively if you're UTA. Completely agree. I mean, you saw that swing. It was a defensive swing. It wasn't an attacking swing. I think Cavasso's over at shortstop. She just let that one get one, two bounce too many. You could see her kind of hesitate, got on her heels for just a split second, but that, I mean, that's all you need if you're the softball. I mean, one bounce too many and it'll eat you up. Here's Sydney Sanders in the air toward fairly shallow left and diving in comes Breenacy. It's Paris Breenacy. Let's out a scream to help encourage her teammates after that diving play. She was pumped up on that one. Left her feet full extension. I mean, you can see she's completely vertical on that one. And Moreno making another pitch. 
coming in, jamming Sid Sanders, not allowing her to get extended. So with one away, here is Alina Torres. Alina getting the start at second base once again tonight. She's alternated some over there. And we've also seen Avery Hodge a bunch. Just kind of one of those situational things based upon the pitcher, the time of the game. This one pulled foul, says the plate umpire Chad Spittler. So we'll do it all over again. You think of the athletes that Coach Gasso gets for Oklahoma. You have Alyssa Burrito, she played left field, now in the third base position. You have Alina Torres, came in playing third base. She's over at second, she's a true utility. In her head, she says, I just want to get on the field. Wherever you want me, that's where I'll be. And speaking of that for Alina Torres, spending some time in practice behind the plate. We heard Coach Gasso talk about that in her press conference this week as well. But Torres um, hadn't caught since she was in high school and just picked it up and said, let's go. <laughs> so <laughs> tells you the type of athlete that Alina Torres is. Had a 1-7 pop time to second base on those throws, and she drills this one to center field. It's gone. Alina Torres puts the Sooners on top with a two-run blast to straightaway center field. It's two to one, Oklahoma. Utility player deluxe, but man, can she swing the bat as well. And right on cue, talking about the athletes that Alina Torres is, gives the Sooners the lead with one swing of the bat and doing such a great job. That pitch elevated up in the zone just a bit and taking it right back where it came from. Great piece of hitting by Torres. That was another thing Coach Gasso talked about in the press conference. She looks comfortable. She has found herself in the box. She has found herself mentally. And I think that's the hardest thing as a hitter. Whenever you're stressing and you're trying to get into that starting lineup, starting rotation, especially at a school like Oklahoma. Oh, man. That one hit by Boone right back up the middle. And we'll see if that got a piece of Moreno. That home run, by the way, was brought to you by OERB the blast to straightaway center field. Maybe just got the glove of Moreno. I think so. Moreno did a great job. And I say great job. A lot of times you get those line darts right back you, at you as a pitcher. It's just, that's just reaction. Reflex, reflexes, reaction. But Moreno looks to be okay, thankfully. And the Sooners with a threat once again with one out. And Riley Ludlam is in. So the Sooners are giving Kenzie Hansen, their captain, a little bit of time as she has a little tweak in her right knee, a day-to-day -day situation. Patty Gasso said not out for the season or anything like that. But what an advantage they have in the transfer from Furman, who was the Southern Conference Player of the Year. I mean, you've got a veteran presence backing up a veteran. And I can tell you right now, there are so few programs in the country that have that luxury, right? To have another senior, another seasoned catcher who is your quote unquote number two. I mean, it's such a luxury. This will be picked off by Corona, the third baseman for the second out is Loveland. Loveland pops out and it's back to the top of the order. Janet Coleman. The base hit off the third baseman, Corona, her first time. And it looks like Kara Dill, the head coach, who's also the pitching coach, is going to come out. Through this lineup for a second time, she's going to have to start mixing in a little bit of off speed to get these sooner hitters off balance. So here's Jada Coleman already with a hit tonight. Sooners have taken the lead on a two run home run by Alina Torres. Jada batting 425 as she stands in after that single earlier. She was talking this week about the switch flipping, so to speak, for this team. And she said the practice after their loss to Louisiana was a little different energy, perhaps, with this team. And they've been perfect 9 0 since then. Hi. <laughs> I might get a little bit of hate for this from Sooner fans, but I'm a big advocate 
of losses. You learn so much as a team. It makes you hungrier. And sometimes there's things that you need to work on as a team. But if you're winning, you're winning, right? Once the loss happens, it's a little bit more we need to shape up. We need to get sharper. A wild pitch going to move Riley Boone into scoring position. What do you think of that, DJ? I, I wholeheartedly agree. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say, lose games, right? None of us, <laughs> no one who's a competitor will ever feel that way. However, um, you, you roll back to that loss, and you even walk away from wins. I can tell you there are wins this team walks away from, every team, and goes, there are things that we need to be better on. Pulled through the right side by Coleman. Boone is around third. That ball got away from Nicole Hill. Coleman can fly. She races to third. That throw gets away, and she'll circle on. Jada Coleman plates two. There will be an error, probably two on the play. And the Sooners have a 4-1 lead. <laughs> These fans are going nuts. You don't get to see an in-the-park home run too often. Jada Coleman, crazy speed here. But again, aided by a few errors. You can see, as an outfielder, you need to get behind that ball. You cannot let that ball get past you. But also, hit your cut. That right there is why Jada Coleman, she got waved around third by Patty Yasso saying, go forward. There's no one there backing up that ball. You're in safe, not even a slide. So the Sooners lead it 4-1. to one. Third error defensively in this inning. Yeah, this is a team that had 28 errors for the season coming in. They've committed three. So it's two errors against the right fielder, Nicole Hill there. She misplays the ball and then misses the cutoff player on the infield. And it's a 4-1 Sooner lead. Here's Ella Parker reached on a fielder's choice. Her first time, and she hits a tailing fly ball into the left field corner and just out of play as Brinacy bangs into the fence down there. Looked like she might have had that and the ball got jarred out of her glove. That's tough for us to see down into the corner. Good effort one way or the other by the left fielder. Yeah. Oh, right as she rammed into that wall. That ball just slipped out of her glove. We saw a diving catch by her earlier. She She's shown really good range out there. Back up the middle and misplayed there by Zaya Castrita. That'll get out into right center field. This is the second time we've seen a middle for UT Arlington. Just wait on the ball. That extra hop has been killing them. And it's difficult whenever you go into an unfamiliar field, you've never practiced there before, like in a midweek, but you saw it happen. You got those reps in pregame. You need to make those adjustments. You need to be aggressive. Come in on those balls. And Tiara Jennings bats is the eighth sooner to come to the plate here. That scored a hit. On the move, once again, is Parker. She has swiped her second base of the night. Exact same situation we saw back in the first. Ella Parker taking the bag and making it look easy. But I love this for Jennings right here. Didn't quite get it done when she popped up back in the first inning with Parker in scoring position. An opportunity here to add another run to this lead. So two more stolen bases tonight for Ella Parker. She's 10 of 11, leading the Sooners in that category. Jennings popped up to the first baseman, Franklin, her first time. Sooners with four runs here in this inning. And that called just a little bit inside. You know, and we've seen some hard hit balls in this inning. By OU, but I've got to say, Moreno has not thrown as poorly as the line for this inning has looked. Her defense has not gotten the job done behind her. And I, I love you pointing that out because also that showcases as a freshman, she's not getting the results that she wants from her defense, but she's still going back up to the mound, batter after batter, pitch after pitch, and she's throwing good stuff. She is making these plays happen. 
And that's a walk to Tiare Jennings. The Sooners have batted around now as Cassidy Pickering is set to come to the plate. And you feel for Moreno, just as you said, DJ. She has pitched better than the fate that she has gotten in this inning. And an opportunity here. Two outs, freshman versus freshman matchup, right? And we've seen, again, I, I think this is the third or fourth time I've said it, but we've seen her make some pitches and hit some locations. Tiara Jennings also moves into a tie for second place in total bases in Sooner history. She ties Lauren Chamberlain in that category. She is tied for the overall doubles mark in program history as well. Parker at second. Cassidy Pickering flied out to the left fielder, Brina C. Back in the first. And this will get on out of play. Last at bat, you talked about her flying out. That pitch right there, just underneath it. Both of those swings, she has a lot of power going up. We've seen a lot of doubles, even a couple of home runs over in that left center, left field area. Right now, she's just getting a little bit too steep, trapping underneath that ball. She's able to flatten that out, it'll go. Three balls and a strike. By the way, the Baylor series, it'll be at Hall of Fame Stadium on Friday just to finish up. The other two games will be here at Love's Field on Saturday and Sunday. And there's ball four to load the bases. And Alyssa Brito, who started the inning by reaching on an error, will get another shot. I'm curious to see here how long UTA is going to stick with the freshman. Again, some of this damage, a lot of this damage, has been done by errors defensively, whether they're errors in the scorebook or not. We have seen some mishaps defensively from this UTA team. Moreno has shown really good composure. However, we've seen back-to-back -back walks here. Five pitchers on the roster for Kara Dill. They got into a situation last year where they were down to two pitchers. It's never a good, never a good, never a good feeling. <laughs> she, she said it and honestly made it easy. Okay, you're starting. If we find trouble, you're coming in. That's true. You know? That's like old school staff. Yeah. Or circa 80s, 90s <laughs> softball. Hey. You know your role. <laughs> yes. No guessing there. Oh, so am I the middle reliever? <laughs> this is drilled to deep left field, high and deep, and it is gone. A grand slam for Alyssa Brito, and it's 8-1. Oklahoma has unloaded in the bottom of the second inning. You always get the feeling that Alyssa Burrito is going to do something big in those situations. The situation is no different. Burrito started the inning and got things rolling, but just took a mistake from Moreno and made the freshman pay. And that home run is presented by OERB, the people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. And now we will have a pitching change on the part of the Mavericks. Oklahoma exploding eight runs that they had along with Jessica Adams when they were down to just two pitchers last year. So a lot of innings for her. But she inherits a bases empty two out situation and faces Sidney Sanders who flied out to Brina C in left field her first time. So home runs by Alina Torres and Alyssa Brito an eight run sooner second inning. Kind of wonder, you know, I, I kind of mentioned it after the walk to Pickering. It was back-to-back -back walks coming from Moreno, the freshman. You know, Coach Dill, head coach, also pitching coach. I wonder if after this game is over, she starts to kind of look back and think if she left the freshman in one batter too long. Again, you see good pitches, did not necessarily throw as poorly as the stat line will show. Um, hit some good locations, but you could kind of see her pressing to find the zone for a couple of batters in a row.
Sydney Sanders has been on fire during the month of March. She has hit 10 home runs this season and 21 walks. Both lead the Big 12. And there's walk number 22. <laughs> so what do you do with her? She hits it out of the ballpark. And if you miss with a pitch, she'll take her walks. And that brings yeah, Torres back in. Even whenever Sanders wasn't quite yet on fire, from what we have seen, she still led the team in walks. Mm -hmm. Her strikeout ratio was high, but she was patient. She saw the ball. She goes deep into counts. But now that you add in her bats on fire. This is smoked to left field by Torres, and she has homered for the second time in the inning. Two two-run home runs in the second inning. Ducks are wild, they say. Three twos, two two-run home runs in the second for Torres. And Oklahoma leads 10-1. Alina Torres settling in. How about that? Look at this pitch here. It's that same one that Alyssa Brito just hammered that low and inside pitch. Different pitcher, yes, same location. <laughs> she knows that's two. <laughs> and it's presented by OERB, the people of Oklahoma Oil and Natural Gas. So Sanders takes the walk, Torres drills the home run, and the Sooners lead it 10 1 as Riley Boone bats. She singled and scored earlier this inning. Deuce is wild here in the second, but my favorite two up on the board right now is two outs. This run production has come with two outs in this inning. That foul ball was caught. Whenever Oklahoma does what Oklahoma does, majority of the time it happens with two outs. They practice that all the time. So whenever you get into games, it feels like it's a regular situation. It feels like a regular. And Boone hits a high drive to left center field. That's off the wall in left center. Boone's going to stop and take a look at second base. And she will hold right there with a double. <laughs> Boone knew she probably could have gotten to third. Patty Gasso's reaction off screen. She was waving her around. She thought she had it. Riley Boone's seventh double of the year. That low and away pitch has been bread and butter for Oklahoma this game. She thought about it. Instantly regretted it, you could see. And the inning continues for Riley Ludlam, who popped up to the third baseman Corona for the second out. That's how long Oklahoma has gone in this inning. Eight batters since the last out was made. And Ludlam at this point in this inning is the only Sooner hitter who has not reached base. Ten runs on seven hits here in the second. Three errors that have left the door open for Oklahoma to not walk through the door, but break it off the hinges. And this is the Oklahoma that teams have been waiting for. I think what they expected to see in the month of February that they hadn't seen yet is just the explosion of runs. And you saw that this past weekend against Texas Tech. Clearly, they're continuing it right there. And there's ball four to Ludlam. So Boone at second and Ludlam at first. And the lineup rolls back to the top for Jada Coleman. This point for bumpers in the circle for UTA. That is the fourth walk in this inning. You pair that with the defensive errors. 
You can't control bombs, right? You can't defend the long ball. We've seen that. You can't defend walks. And you've got to take advantage when your pitcher gets a ground ball. So it has been the trifecta of mistakes in this inning for UTA. So rolling back to the top of the order where we're going to see a pinch hitter. But Bumpers has got to find a way to let her defense hopefully get her out of this inning. And the core bats here for Jada Coleman. Coleman's night two for two with a run scored. And now Hannah Core bats. Saw her in a midweek game last week against Tarleton State, hit a home run. Redshirt sophomore from Yorba Linda, California. Battled a back injury last year. She is the 15th Sooner batter here in the second. I think if you're Arlington, you're wanting to step up right here, not just as a pitcher, but as a defense. I, I would love, probably won't see it, but I would just love for a timeout in the infield to say, give us a ground ball, we got you. To let their pitcher know, we're ready. We are ready for this ground ball. We're ready to get out. There's a ground ball backhanded by Castrita, and she'll take it to the bag. But the Sooners bash three home runs. CC wins. Nicole Hill, the number nine batter in the order, set to stand in for the Mavericks. You look out on the defense for Oklahoma, completely new, except for the pitcher, Carla Keeney, the catcher, Riley Ludlum, and the left fielder, Pickering. Everybody else is completely new on defense. And we're in the third. This is Avery Hodge gobbling this one up. And able to retire Hill for the first out in the third. The lead stretches so quickly that you do get a lot of younger players, some valuable experience. And back to the top of the order for Camille Corona. She had a base hit and scored the run back in the first. For Corona, the senior, she extends her hit streak to nine games after her single back in the first inning, but the senior has been an absolute spark plug and the ultimate leadoff hitter for this UTA offense. Fifth year player who transferred from Texas. And she played against the Sooners in the 2022 Women's College World Series Championship Series. Got a little action there. She paid a visit to Austin this year with the Mavericks, and the Texas fans gave her a very supportive standing ovation, recognizing what she did for that program. Beautiful bunt that's going to be a base hit. So she's two for two, and another multi-hit game for her as a Maverick. First baseman, number 10 this year. She has been so successful and we talked about her being a spark plug. She got on base. She led off the Mavs in the first inning and that's whenever they scored. There was pressure applied from the jump. Here's Franklin. Rolls this one foul. Pass third. Think of the top three in this UTA lineup especially. This is where if you're Keeney, you need to have those tight, tight pitches on the corners. One thing I want to see Keeney do in this inning, again, giving up the one out single, but really settling in and letting her pitches work with a nine run lead. That flare lands fair down the left field line. Pickering will pick it up and it's back to back singles for Corona and Franklin, just as they did to start the game for UTA. And kind of going back to that with Keeney, you've got two hitters in this lineup who are four for four on the day, going now through the three, four, five in the meat of this UTA lineup. This is where I want to see Keeney make a pitch and get a ground ball. Let your defense get you out of this inning. Marley Nices, reigning whack player of the week. 
Laid down a sacrifice bunt. Sooners committed an error, and the Mavericks got a run out of it as Torres has to double clutch on that one at third. Still able to retire Lindsey Franklin at second base for the second out. Torres just rushing that a little bit. You can see she had a clear play at third. I think she was thinking double play a little bit too quick, too far ahead of herself. But she hasn't been in that third third base spot. So whenever you're not used to that, you can feel the game start to speed up in that unfamiliar position. You want to rush. You, you want to get that lead out. You want to get that double play. Settling in, we saw that a little bit from UTA. Their defense just letting the ball get the best of them, waiting one hop too many. Alina awesome. Torres has hit two two-run home runs in this game. Offensively, she I'd still be walking stunt. on clouds after that. <laughs> <laughs> Jessica Adams to the plate. She hit a pop-up to third. It was caught. At the time by Sydney Sanders over there, and Sanders was able to get a big double play for the first two outs of this game. And you go back to that, back in the first inning, those are the types of things as this game goes on for UTA, that was such a shift in momentum, right? You're one, two, back-to-back -back singles, you get a run on the board, and then all of a sudden, boom, you've got two outs, and it's been all sooner since then. So those are the types of plays that really can turn a game and shift the momentum and same thing here, first and third, an opportunity for Keeney to work out of this. I know a nine-run lead, but still, again, keep that momentum in the Sooner dugout. And then if you're UTA, you got a runner on third through an error. So if you can squeeze one run across, if you can work to get just this leadoff runner to come across home, it, it's not a grand slam, but it is cutting, nibbling at that lead. It's only a third inning. Rolled right back to Keeney. She'll make the play at first, inning over. No runs on two hits, and a pair left for the Mavericks as the Sooners take a 2-1 lead with them to the bottom of the third. Patty Gasso does. Sooners with a 10-run second inning, three home runs in that inning. And Ella Parker back up there. She had a single. She's stolen two bases in this game, one for two. And a new pitcher, Abby Gutierrez, out there for the Mavs. Gutierrez, a freshman, three and one record. Flared out into left center field. Pretty well struck there by Ella Parker, who has her second hit. So here's Abby Gutierrez. She was hurt for much of the fall and. Kara Dill said she's still working through things. This is almost serving as fall in the non-conference portion of the schedule. Now she feels like she's ready to go, but solid three and one record. Yeah, and she does a good job. Again, lefty, has pretty decent velo, but works up and down, which is a much different look than what we saw from Moreno or Bumper who worked east and west. But the lefty holds her own and does a good job of mixing speeds as well. It's something that we have not seen an Arlington pitcher do yet in this ballgame. Here's the first at bat for Quincy Lilio, batting in the three spot for Tiare Jennings, who walked and scored and was 0 for 1. Quincy Lilio, we saw her show some pop in the Iowa State series. She hit a three run home run here at Love's Field. We talked about Coach Gasso being able to give opportunities to those players who aren't the everyday starter. Whenever your team is up 10 to nothing, he saw a completely new defense roll out onto the field, getting that experience. You're gonna see completely new offense roll out into this lineup. Whenever you call somebody off the bench to pinch hit, if they have 10, 20, 30 at bats, there's a lot more confidence. There's a feeling of I'm settled. I, I have that experience. This isn't my first game going in. 
Lilia rifles this one out into left center field. That is headed all the way to the warning track. Nicest picks it up on the track. Lilio cruises to second with the double, and Ella Parker moves over to third. And Nicole, you just said it, take advantage of your opportunities. And Lilio, a good piece of hitting here, going down to get the curveball and taking it the other way. You can see how she gets down in the zone, not just with her hands, with the barrel, but in her legs. She physically lowers her body down to go get that ball. Second double of the season for Quincy Lilio. Brings in Cassidy Pickering. Who's over one with a walk. Fly ball left center and the center fielder Nysis is there. Ella Parker's going to tag at third and cross the plate. It'll be a sacrifice fly for Cassidy Pickering driving in the 11th sooner run of the night. I love seeing the freshmen play the game. Right? We'd love a double off the wall, but that's not how, how it always falls down. But Pickering just doing a good job of getting something she can handle and finding a way to get Parker. Avery Hodge bats for the first time tonight in the spot where Alyssa Brito hit a grand slam in the second inning. In fact, Brito scored two runs tonight, drove in four. There she is. Brito set to get the rest of the night off. What a run that she is on. Brito just, you look, and I feel like she's always been that player, but she looks like she's on an absolute commission. Every time she steps in the box, the approach is just, She's one of the most competitive people I think I've ever been around, but it is just stepping in the box with a plan and a mission every single time, and it's just coming through in everything that she does. Yeah, three home runs and seven runs driven in in her last two games, does Brito. And Hodge draws the one-out walk. Runners to first and second. And to be a younger player on the team, not even a younger player, but to be an athlete on Oklahoma's team and to have somebody like that to go, hey, what are you thinking? Hey, can we hit before practice? Can we hit after practice? Things that Brito will say out loud, if you're a teammate, you can learn from that. And you think of the two freshmen, you think of this entirely new lineup that's coming up this inning. There's so much to learn. There's so much so much experience that Brito has that she can share with her teammates. Obviously, <laughs> she's got it going on. Sanders pops this one up. Straight away center field. Nicest calls for it and has it two down. So Sanders is over two with the walk in this one. And Alina Torres, who's two for two with two <laughs> two-run home runs, stands in. It's not a bad night. No. Why not? <laughs> She's got a seven-game hitting streak. I'm trying to total up what her average is. Not doing so well with the math. There's some big numbers. But she was batting 538 in her last six games coming in. And now... Two more hits and two more at-bats with the home runs. If you're Torres in this moment, in this at-bat, the two home runs, they didn't happen. They're gone. It's over with. You have to live in the present, at-bat to at-bat, pitch to pitch. She rifles this one. Foul down the, I mean, you better be paying attention up on that concourse now. There's a place where you can pose by the Women's College World Series Championship celebration down that line. If you're over there posing for Instagram, you better watch it now. That's coming in hot. Really good pitch by Gutierrez, tight in on the hands, especially after Torres just ripped that pitch foul hard down the line. 
she comes right back there. Better placement on that one. It's not as high, a little bit tighter in on the hands too. The two home runs tonight for Torres. And the home run for Alyssa Brito, Oklahoma now 59 home runs on the season. Looked at the center, had to reach out for that one. And Nysus puts that one away as well. Sooners get one more run and lead 11-1 as we head to the fourth. Sooner softball is presented by OU Health. Proud to be Oklahoma's flagship. Seminoles are not afraid to go out and play teams. In the middle of conference play as well to have a non-conference matchup like that. Driven to straightaway center field, back to the wall. Core reaches up, pulls it back into the park, probably saves a home run as Kaitlin Saylor has to stop at second base. First pitch swinging greets SGA Guerin Rubley with that deep drive. And I think Core brought that ball back in. What do you all think? I don't know. I think that one might have hit off the wall, but you could see the way Core jumped. I think she jumped just a little early. Nope, she's in front of the wall. Had it. Just a little early. You can see her body start to fall down as that ball is coming in, but still a great effort, a great attempt. I also says they haven't been able to practice on this field as an outfielder, getting to know and not an everyday starter, getting to know that outfield wall. That is a special relationship. If you're an outfielder, you know. Donahue pops this one up on the infield. Quincy Lilio takes care of it. So S.J. Guerin on to pitch here for the Sooners. Carly Keeney, the starter, went the first three, and now here is S.J. The lefty, a lot of spin. You, whenever you think of S.J., you think of her as a situational pitcher, one that is deceptive. That one comes across. She has an off speed. She's not gonna blow it by you, but what she does so well is craft her pitches, craft her spin to make those speed differences feel like they're a little bit more dramatic than they are. SJ Guerin has not allowed an earned run this year in six and two thirds innings. And Nicole, you mentioned it, a situational pitcher, and she has just taken that role and embraced it. And she has been so good out of the bullpen and has done such a tremendous job, uh, job especially late in, late in games. Say a Castrita down swinging as Guerin gets out number two. That is the first strikeout this game for either team. This is an off speed on the outer half. You can see the way that Crestria, she's completely fooled way out in front. That's what SJ Guerin does. That is why she hasn't allowed a run to score yet. Cavazos bunts this one foul. Kayla Cavazos grounded to third, her first time up. Cavazos had a redshirt year last year after playing a bit as a freshman two years ago. Oh, and to the count with two down. SJ's really done a good job since entering this game of hammering the strike zone. It's one of the toughest things to do when you come into a ball game is find the zone and establish it quickly. She's done a great job. Blocked there by Ludlam. And if you're Cavazos, this infield for Oklahoma, they are deep right now. So you know you're gonna have to get something hit pretty hard, pretty square to get through the infield. But this is the third inning in a row UTA has had a runner in scoring position. Hi. 
Dodge over to take this one and able to retire Cavazos for the final out. 11-1 Sooners on top as we hit the home half of the fourth at Love's Field after this. Alongside DJ Sanchez and Nicole Mendez, I'm Chad McKee. How'd I do with that one, Mendez? You know, we were talking off air and I've always said it, Marriott, and you enlightened me. That's not how their commercials say it. Yeah, we got to do it right, Marriott. <laughs> Must be a southern twang kind of thing, say. maybe. Yeah, could I be. Think, I think we learned we're not as cultured as we think. Maybe. <laughs> That's what I learned during I think the you break. Nailed it, DJ. <laughs> Maya Bland for the Sooners to lead off in the fourth, and that pitch a little bit too tall. This UTA team making some strides, and and talking with Kara Dill, you know they had the conference opener against Cal Baptist. They lost the opener. And because of weather situations, had to play a doubleheader. And you always worry, how is my team going to I've got 30 minutes to get my <laughs> team ready. They came out and got a run rule. Offensively, they swung it well, so they bounced right back. You're, you're seeing the signs that I think. And, DJ, you've been in these situations as a coach. To see that, it's got to be really encouraging. Yeah, I, from watching this team, and again, tough night as Maya Bland laces that out to right field for a leadoff single. But one of the toughest things to do as a staff is to put your culture in place and get your players to buy in. And I feel like in the way that this team plays and the way that they go about their business, you can see that this team is bought in to what Coach Dill and her staff is trying to build. And that's that's the hardest hurdle to get over <laughs> as, as yeah. a new staff. It absolutely is. And you can see the culture at play in this team, regardless of what the scoreboard says. Popped up here by Ludlam, out near second base, and Castrita puts away the first out in the fourth. I think one great thing for UTA, too, is this is a team with a lot of youth, a ton of youth. Whenever you have a team that buys in, and there's a lot of time for them to grow in that culture, and they're fully invested in it. The coaching staff that they have, they have a lot of experience, not only with success, but just with high caliber quality teams. Yeah, Kara Dill said one thing that's really aided them is being able to hire that third assistant. And they hired Elizabeth Mason, who played at Florida State. This one is driven, hit very well by Core. It's off the top of the wall in right center field. Maya Bland racing around third. She stumbled a little bit, but dives back in. And the Sooners have runners in second and third on a Hannah Core double in the fourth. I got it. <laughs> you can see that dugout just laughing a little bit. That is a ball that we saw often in fall ball with Hannah Core during the Sooner series. And I've got to say this. Marley Nice is out in center, saved a run in the way that she played that ball off the wall. Absolutely. It was quick, and getting that ball <laughs> in quickly, that's a big time defensive play from Nices. Hannah Kaur's second double of the year, and runners at second and third now for Ella Parker. Ella's got two hits in this one, two runs scored as well. She is batting 463. And this is not, you know, we've we've been out and played some teams just to get the season started batting 463. This is you've been in there against good teams. You're already two weeks into conference play, and she's a freshman batting 463. Pulls this one. May have gotten a piece of the glove of Gutierrez, but the throw to first by Castrita, able to retire Ella Parker. Still, Maya Bland comes in to score the Sooner run. And it's 12-1, Oklahoma in the fourth. Just getting the job done there. And Parker, you were just talking about it, Chad. The numbers speak for themselves, but again, playing the game, not getting a pitch that she struck well or can handle, but still finding a way to take to the other, take it the other way and get the job done. So that brings in Quincy Lilio. Quincy had a double. And she came on for Tiara Jennings in the third. Big hack at that one. 
we talked quite a bit when Coach Gasso made all of the defensive changes and the changes throughout the lineup. But one thing you notice, the freshmen stayed in. Parker, Pickering, still in this lineup, getting the reps. Lilio fouls that one off 12-1 Sooners in position to take a run rule win as we roll to the top of the fifth here in a moment. But Lilio would like to extend the proceedings here a bit. Yeah, the Gutierrez, really good pitching sequence here. Lilio pulls this one toward first foul. What do you like about the sequence, Nicole? The best thing that I've seen about it is Lilio, her last at bat against Gutierrez. She had a curveball that was low and away. She went down to get it. And Gutierrez, you can tell she is cautious of that location. She's still going there, but it's a little bit farther off the plate. It's a little bit higher. It's a little bit lower. She is moving that ball around. Even though she's staying on that outside half, it's never in that same location. Again, a little bit farther out in that river, higher up in the zone, everything moving away from Lilio. She's still having to stay on that ball pretty well to be able to get a piece of that. Down low, and one and two to Lilio. 12 runs on 12 hits for the Sooners. Three home runs, two by Alina Torres tonight. She's driven in four, and Alyssa Brito has a grand slam. Lelio goes after that one, and Gutierrez gets a strikeout to finish things. Sooners will try to win it, taking a 12-1 lead to the top of the fifth inning when we come back. Well, home, I can tell you the same thing. Being a freshman, being able to go to Toby Keith's Bar and Grill after we won freshman year. Pretty good way to celebrate. <laughs> Pretty good way. Think of one time he came in to the locker room and he was just gonna give the team a pep talk and casually, right? Toby Keith, like, hey, I'm gonna give you a pep talk and Grace Green is the biggest Toby Keith fan <laughs> in the world and she came out of the bathroom not knowing. And uh, let's just say she was really happy. She was a freshman and she goes, I, I knew Toby Keith hung around the program but I didn't know that I would get to meet him. So she was ecstatic. I think she ran up to him and goes, can I, can I hug you? And gave him a big hug. It was pretty funny. <laughs> Pete Monticelli on the pitch here for the Sooners. What do you think of S.J. Guerin in that uh, outing that we saw from her, D.J.? She did exactly what she was brought into this ballgame to do. Plain and simple. Throw outs and have a quick inning. Um, gave up the double to start, but recovered nicely. Got the K. I mean... That's all you can ask for out of the bullpen. Same thing here with Monticelli. Coming in late, and I love this call to Monticelli. She's got the most velo of anyone on this staff. It's it's kind of like bringing Wild Thing out of the bullpen to <laughs> slam the door, saying, if you can hit it, you can rename it. But this is such a great spot for her in the type of pitcher that she is of just coming in, trying to slam the door here in the fifth. The Wisconsin transfer misses a little bit low here. Nicole Hill. Does the velocity approach Paige Lowry velocity? Not quite. Not quite. Paige Lowry, she, I mean, she was one of a kind. You don't see too many pitchers throwing a true 75. A little pop up here foul. It's going to land. But again, whenever you go from SJ who throws high 50s, low 60s, maybe touching 63 to Monticelli, who consistently throws 67, 68. That's a big split. That's a big difference. So as an offense, if you're UT Arlington, you're going to have to mentally go, okay, I need to speed myself way up. This one fouled back as well. We were talking with uh, Kelly Maxwell earlier this weekend and Patty Gasso about you know, Jennifer Rocha being able to work with these pitchers and, and many of the young ones and the new ones. But DJ, when you get into conference play and you see the same opponent three straight times, it kind of allows you to focus a little bit more on just that one thing as Hodge rifles one across here to get Nicole Hill. But there's less scout, 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 and, and you can hone in on more specific things and actually probably 
uh, increases your ability to get better quicker. Absolutely. And, you know, as a pitcher, and I think, Mindy, you probably felt this at times as well, when you get into conference and you're playing that three-game set, there is a little bit of going into each game and having – a little bit of a different game plan because you can't go in and throw the same pitch sequence Friday on Friday that you throw on Sunday, right? right? So there's a little bit of a learning curve when you're walking in, especially as a young pitcher. So every single opportunity that you get in these situations and then moving into Baylor being in town this weekend, again, it's, it's taking that learning curve and moving quickly. And again, this is an opportunity for Monticelli again, just to get some reps. And you prove yourself. You think of Astray, she's proven herself, gotten more innings. Monticelli proves herself time and time again. She's gonna get more opportunity. Corona rolls this one over to Lilio. And the Sooners are one out away from another win. Camille Corona had been two for two before that. Another multi-hit game and extending her hitting streak to nine straight. And now Lindsey Franklin, who is two for two in this game. Sooners are out away from 28 and one and their 10th consecutive win. A little bit upstairs. So it is Baylor Friday at 6 o'clock in Oklahoma City. And then here in Norman Saturday at 2 and Sunday at 1 o'clock. Be a lot of activity. Skip Johnson Sooner baseball teams off to a 6-0 start in conference play as well. And they've got a three-game series with West Virginia on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And, and we can see the lights of Eldale Mitchell Park just over the left field wall here. What a pretty sunset it is whenever you're looking over there. That it is. Monticelli with that screwball tight in. She is painting those corners. We talked about the importance of being able to spot it up. Yes. There's that sunset. But right on cue, beautiful spot from Monticelli with the screwball. Monticelli gets the strikeout to finish it, and the Sooners win 12-1 in a five-inning run rule. Oklahoma goes to 28-1 on the season. They are 11-1 at their new home, Loves Field, and they have won 10 games in a row. Three strong innings from Carly Keeney. S.J. Guerin pitches one inning. Peyton Monticelli as well, and lots of offense, as is typical for the top-ranked three-time defending national champions. A grand slam from Alyssa Brito, and two two-run home runs from Alina Torres. It's hard to remember that Oklahoma trailed in this game, one nothing in the first inning. 